Welcome to Mother Effing September, you guys. So September is a month that is very, very different than the last couple months we've had. We finally are going to have some forward motion, okay, as Venus is finally going direct. So all of the wonky relationship stuff, all of the wonky, you know, self-care, relationship to ourselves, relationship to our self-esteem, our confidence, like all of that is finally going to be going forward, taking a forward motion. We are finally going to be moving forward in our lives in a lot of ways. And September is also a period of time where we are really cleaning things up to prepare for eclipse season that starts in October. So you definitely want to pay attention to your horoscope this month. You may want to come back and watch it quite a few times throughout the month because you're not going to want to miss this boo. Now, um, I do want to say really quick before we begin that I am doing this video a little bit differently. I'm pretty busy right now and didn't get a chance to film this until literally the last minute, like September 1st is tomorrow when I'm filming this. So I'm not going to be able to spend a week editing it. <laughs> Usually it takes me quite a few days to edit it. So I'm going to not edit this one a lot like I usually do. I'm probably not going to put the charts and everything up because I create them all myself and it's just a lot of freaking work. Okay. So, um, yeah. Anyways, with that being said, if you would like more from me, make sure to join my Patreon down below for only $5 a month. You can get a lot more info. You can ask questions. You can, can interact, hang out, become a part of our tribe over on Patreon. Don't miss out on that. I also do personal readings if you would like a more specific look uh, at your chart to see what the hell is going on for you in your life. And uh, if you're feeling blocked anywhere, if you're under wanting to understand more about yourself, more about your chart, more about what's going on in your life, I also offer those down below, so see the description. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into what is coming for you for your rising sign for the month of September 2023. Alrighty, starting with you, Virgo rising, since this is your season, Bill. If you are a Virgo sun and you happen to be watching this, happy birthday, <laughs> but this will relate more to you if you are a Virgo rising. So Virgo risings, this month for you is all about upgrades, boo. You are upgrading yourself, your standards, your values, your principles, and you are cleaning shit up when it comes to your identity, who you are. You're getting very fucking clear on who you are again. And that is becoming very crystal clear to you. Like you are really, really getting in the zone this month when it comes to who you are, what you want, what you desire, subconscious desires that maybe you haven't been fulfilling and subconscious patterns that have been keeping you stuck. You know, like you are getting very, very clear on this. And by the time of the middle of the month, you're really going to feel this spring forward in your life. Finally, it's like you are really in this reflecting stage of who you are, what you want, your own values, your place in the world, how you can upgrade yourself and your life by upgrading yourself, right? Like everything starts with us, right? Everything starts with you. If you don't know who you are, if you're not staying true to who you are, if you're not staying true to yourself, if you are not working on the things about yourself that you wish to improve upon, right? Then you can start to feel lost, right? You can start to feel like other areas of your life start feeling disconnected or confusing as well. And so this is a time, September is a month, Virgo, where you're really working on self-improvement, right? You started probably this in August, maybe even in July, but a lot of you are kind of wrapping things up this month. It's like you're getting very clear on where you need to clean shit up with yourself and with your life, right? Where you need to step into like boss mode and get shit moving, get shit done, get very clear about what your next direction is, right? So there could be old behaviors, old habits, you know, things going on with your body, with your health, with your vitality, with your appearance, with, you know, just your identity that are just not aligned with who you are anymore, right? And so you're really getting clear on these things and you're really reflecting on these things this month so you can finally clean this shit up, right? That is what September is really all about for you in a lot of ways. Like you're going to be feeling uh, a lot of upgrades in September, you know, especially after the middle of the month. Like it's definitely getting more and more clear you know, before the middle of the month, but by the middle of the month, like right around the 15th, you are going to be crystal clear on like who you are, what you want, what's good for you, getting back into some kind of structure that feels right for you. And a lot of the times you're going to find in September, if you're a Virgo rising, that the solution is an easy solution. It's a simple fix. It's just rearranging a few things where 
changing your mindset about a few things, you know? And then from there, it's like you skyrocket, right? And so I really love this month for you, Virgo. So let's go ahead and get into it. So on the fourth, we're gonna have Venus moving direct. She is done retrograding. She's finally moving forward in your 12th house. So you have been really re reflecting on your subconscious habits, your subconscious patterns, where you maybe have been hiding parts of yourself, right? Maybe where you've been scared to be seen, right? Maybe things from childhood, maybe inner child work, you know? Um, <clears throat> this has been a time where you've also been maybe reflecting on certain patterns and relationships or cycles and relationships. Maybe you've been learning how to integrate and release and forgive and really let things go that have no longer, you know, that no longer have a part in your life, basically, right? That are no longer helping you in some way. And so this has been a time where you've been really doing that. But on the fourth, Venus is finally moving forward. So it's a time to really start putting into action the things that you've learned since the end of July in this area of life. So then also right around the fourth, um, we're going to have Jupiter trining Mercury. And you could notice this the first few days of the month. It doesn't just have to be right on the fourth. It could be on the few days leading up to the fourth. But Jupiter trining Mercury is really, really beautiful. It's really bringing in this sense of like the missing puzzle piece, right? And that's gonna be happening a lot for you this month. You're really gonna start noticing where these puzzle pieces are starting to fit together, right? It's like, you know, maybe you've seen glimpses of it or you saw glimpses of it before, but now it's coming back around. And it's like, oh, okay, here's another piece right here's another piece and so right in those first few days of the month it's like something is clicking for you especially in terms of your outlook on life and yourself your place in the world especially when it comes to maybe travel pursuits educational pursuits your belief systems what you're learning in life the experience that you have in life and what you want to do with that where you find your greater sense of purpose and meaning in your life right so that's becoming very, very uh, clear to you around this time. Could also deal maybe with relationships uh, you could find or uh, home and family, just because Jupiter rules those sectors of your chart as well. So then around, right around the sixth or maybe like the fifth or the sixth, you could really also get another big moment of clarity coming in here because Jupiter, or not Jupiter, sorry, the Sun and Mercury are coming together to make the Mercury Kazemi. And this is a time when the sun sheds its light on Mercury retrograde and really makes things crystal clear for us. So right around the fifth or the sixth, it's like you are gonna really start understanding what this Mercury retrograde and your sign that started the end of August is really all about. It's like you're getting even more clear. It's like some kind of news could come in. You could have some kind of revelation. It's like you realize exactly what you need to do or the changes that you need to make, the adjustments that you need to make, the tweaks that you need to make to really start feeling more in alignment with yourself, with your body, with your health, uh, with who you are and, and all of that. And so that's really gonna come in. This could be like, you know, you find realizing like oh this is you know maybe I need this particular diet and I've been doing this or I need to do this particular exercise or um, you know I had these kinds of values that aren't you know that I'm not acknowledging or that I haven't been aligning with you know like something like that to do with you or your body or your health or your appearance could really really start clicking right around the fifth or sixth so then um, right around the 8th, we have the sun in your sign trining Jupiter, another really big moment of optimism, faith, um, just seeing the bigger picture, seeing how, you know, just seeing things bigger, like having a bigger vision for yourself, right? Feeling very lucky. And again, you can notice this on the day, a few days leading up to the 8th, but it's really going to be a time where you are kind of reflecting on your belief systems, your outlooks, your morals, your values, in terms of the world at large, in terms of where you're going in life. And you could really be feeling a lot more clear on that and a lot more optimistic about that. So then on the 15th, we have the new moon in your sign. As I always say, new moon, new you boo. So this is gonna be a time where all of those first couple weeks um, are really like just coming full circle, right? Those first couple weeks of September are really coming full circle by the time of this new moon, right around the 15th. Mercury is also going direct right around this time. So it's like everything's coming together. You're seeing very clearly, you're finally moving forward. There's finally this new beginning, this new start with everything you've learned in the previous weeks and you're able to start applying that right you're able to start applying that you're able to start moving forward you're able to start thinking more clearly you're done going back and reflecting and fixing things that are broken or tweaking things or whatever it's like now it's like full 
full forward motion, right? And you're feeling this like newness, this fresh start, this new you, right? It's like time for the new Virgo to be born, born right? So then right around the 18th, we're going to have Venus squaring Jupiter for her final time. This is happening from your 12th to your eighth, or no, sorry, not eighth, ninth house. Um, so this is going to be, you know, you've already, we've already been kind of going through this, but this is really kind of, again, reflecting on certain healing pursuits and ventures that you went on and kind of getting this moment of clarity with that, kind of having this kind of moment of closure or um, an ending of, of seeing something uh, in a bigger way, integrating something in a bigger way right around the 18th. So on the 23rd, Libra season begins, which is your second house of money and finances, income, resources, possessions, what you own, what you value in your priorities. So the, the focus is gonna start shifting to those things um, around that time. Now there already is somewhat of a focus on that in September because Mars is in your second house already. So you are dealing with trying to balance out and harmonize challenges going on with your financial situations, your priorities, et cetera, in this area of life. But once the sun moves into Libra, you're really gonna start realizing maybe what the problems are, right? Or what needs to be balanced out, right? You're gonna start seeing things more clearly. So then on the 25th, um, Jupiter is going to trine Mercury um, again <laughs> for the final time. And so Mercury will be direct and Jupiter will be trining it uh, from your first to your ninth. And this is where you kind of finally get that, that final puzzle piece, that final moment of like closure, of integration, of seeing the bigger vision, it being very crystal clear mentally for you and knowing what you want, right? Knowing what you want out of life, feeling very optimistic, feeling very hopeful for the future, etc. This could also be engaging in an educational pursuit or engaging in travel or something along those lines. So then right at the 29th, at the very end of the month, we are going to have the Aries full moon, which is a very intense and crazy full moon that's coming in. Um, and this is your eighth house. So this is already an intense and crazy house that it's happening in. So this is probably the more, I would say the most challenging uh, aspect that we have at the month, because right around this Aries full moon, there's going to be a lot of transits and placements that are per like getting close to coming into their, you know, perfect, coming into perfection, coming into their exact aspect, such as the South node and Mars are going to be, you know, just a few degrees apart, almost exact. And, um, um, they're going to be squaring Pluto um, in Capricorn, um, which is going to be almost exact. And Venus is going to be on our way to squaring Uranus again. So this full moon is pretty crazy. So I'm going to do a separate video on it. But <laughs> so I'll explain more then once we get a little closer to that time. But it is going to be a crazy full moon. I don't think it's something that you necessarily need to fear, but it could be a pretty big ending in your life, right? Um, it could deal with relationships, finances, debt, connections, you know, uh, financial connections in some way, um, you know, maybe, you know, some power struggles, things like this could really come up. And the, the really big name of the game here is that either you or somebody else in your life is doing what is best for them. And it could create challenge in terms of, you know, a certain agreement, contract, harmony, balance, something like that, that was found at one point, um, it could shake that up a little bit or something could be ending or decreasing or being let go of or dissolved around this time. Um, and, but it's, it's pushing you towards the path of more independence in terms of your wealth and finances, especially when they involve other people um, or business, you know, it could deal with business investments, etc. But yeah, it's going to be a pretty uh, crazy, crazy time of maybe taking care of something that, you know, has the, that's been needed to be taken care of for a long time. Uh, you, this could deal with someone else's money, someone else's finances, money that's owed to you or money that you owe to someone else. But it really is bringing in kind of a lot of, you know, uh, a pretty big ending in, in, in your life in some way. Um, something needs to be diminished or let go of, something karmic. This really makes me think of like a karmic con contract, um, like a karmic, you know, connection or a karmic situation. And it's like, you're done, you know, it's, it's basically like you're done. You're done dealing with this karmic situation and it needs to end, it needs to break off. So if you have any idea of what that might be about at the end of the month, let me know below. But that is what I'm seeing for you, Virgo. This is very much about cleaning shit up in your life to do with yourself, to do with your identity, to do with your health, to do with your body, getting really back in touch with who you are, what's clear for you, 
what's going to help you step up and upgrade and, you know, get shit moving, you know? So, um, yeah, let me know down below if you feel like this is going to resonate for you. I'd love to hear your feedback. And um, also, if you would like more from me, make sure to see the description below. I do readings. I have a Patreon where I do more. And also, if you watch all the way through to your hor to the end of your horoscope here, comment the word badass down below and let me know along with your rising sign and your feedback and what you thought. Anyways, Virgo, happy September and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, my lovely Libras, my lovely Libra Risings, welcome to your September 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So September for you, if you are a Libra Rising, is really about cleaning your shit up, boo. Cleaning up the things that you've been neglecting, right? Cleaning up the things going on behind the scenes, you know, like the, the little skeletons in your closet that you haven't been wanting to like face or address. Like it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. I mean, literally for some of you, it could be like, you know, errands that you've been meaning to run, but you haven't, right? Like, um, you know, physically actually like cleaning your house or cleaning something in your house or getting rid of shit, reorganizing, you know, getting back into some kind of maybe spiritual or healing or self-development practice, right? Like, where have you gotten out of touch uh, with reality in some way, right? Or where are you dealing with, where do you need to deal with like the little things in life that you've been putting off or that have been kind of in the subconscious areas of your mind, right? Like you've been neglecting them, you've been not wanting to deal with them, not wanting to face them, maybe escaping them, right? Patterns, habits, right? It's a huge month for habits, patterns and habits that you haven't wanted to deal with that have just been difficult or tedious or annoying, right? That are really holding you back in your life. Like that's what September is all about for you if you're a Libra rising. The good news is, is that um, we do have a lot of really positive transits this month. We have a lot of Jupiter transits. So it looks like finances, investments, business is, uh, you're getting a lot of, you know, abundance or at least optimism and hope and uh, good opportunities coming in there. Um, but, you know, there's just this kind of subconscious area of your life being lit up this month with all of the placements that we have in Virgo. You know, this is a time where you could find that you need to rest more, that you need to seclude yourself a little bit more. More, that you need to step away from the daily hustle of your life and uh, you know all of the other things that you've been focused on and you may get pulled away from your normal focus for some reason or another right and you could find that you know things could become a little overwhelming if you're not dealing with the small things that you need to deal with this month right um, it all it takes is a simple fix though right so having Virgo in your 12th house all it takes is a simple solution a simple rearranging of some things that can really really help you right that can really make the biggest difference this month so do keep that in mind you don't need some complex huge strategy or change or whatever to like start feeling better to start feeling more um in alignment with your values and your life etc like this is really going to help you if you can just make those small tweaks and those will usher in the biggest results for you right um so anyways Starting on the 4th, we have Venus, your ruling planet, finally going direct and no longer retrograde Libra. So uh, she's been retrograding in Leo in your 11th house. So you've had a, a massive time of reflecting on your friendships, your communities, your connections, your audience, your network, you know, your social life, your social situations. Um, you've been really reflecting on, you know, the, the crowds that you accompany, you know, the crowds that you keep, the, the friends that you keep, the crowds that you're a part of, right? The groups you're a part of. And so this has been a time where maybe old friends or acquaintances could have come back from the past. Maybe you've been really reflecting on your, your hopes and your aspirations as well. And, you know, the, the different people that really align to you in this area. And so with Venus finally moving direct, it's like all the lessons you've been learning here about maybe like validation and confidence and inner power self-esteem, especially when it comes to friendships and alliances, you know, other people and just the different groups in your life, you know, you, you can finally start applying those lessons and moving forward, right? And so because you're ruled by Venus and your chart ruler would be Venus, if you're a Libra rising, you know, this retrograde, you've likely felt more than other signs that are not Venus ruled, you know? And so um, that could have been a really big focus for you, you know, your friendships, your network, your social life, etc. could have been a really big focus the last, you know, month or so. 
So then right around the third and the fourth as well, we're gonna have Jupiter and Mercury coming into their trine. Um, this is a really positive aspect. Um, it looks like, you know, I, I feel like this month as a Libra rising, you could really find yourself engaging in esoteric topics or deep esoteric topics, like, you know, um, getting into more taboo stuff, getting more, more into spiritual stuff, um, really working on reframing and reorganizing uh, your subconscious or your, your spiritual practices, your self-development practices to yield more of a result in your finances or your business or your investments. Um, you know, something like that could really uh, come up around uh, the beginning of this month with Jupiter trining Mercury. It's like you're seeing a bigger vision, you're seeing what's possible, and maybe you're starting to see solutions to issues or bigger problems or how to create your bigger vision. Like you're seeing solutions for that, I think in the beginning of the month, especially when it comes to the topics I named off, like financial, esoteric, investments, business, etc. So I really like that at the beginning of the month. So then on the sixth, we're gonna have the Sun Mercury uh, Kazemi. So Mercury retrograde is going to conjunct the sun right around the sixth. So you're getting very clear about something right around the sixth, like your subconscious patterns or habits or whatever it is that you're working on behind the scenes, um, whatever is kind of coming to the surface around this time, you're getting very clear about right around the sixth. So uh, pay attention because that could be a, a massive moment of clarity for you. So then right around the 8th, we're then going to have Jupiter trining the sun. Um, and so this is also going to get really optimistic. <laughs> this is a really optimistic, like big thinking, uh, big perspectives, you know, like kind of zooming out kind of moment. And we're also going to be seeing here the opportunity, right? Like you're going to be really seeing the opportunity again in terms of um, a journey that you're going on and how that may relate financially investment wise with esoteric topics, um, business, etc. So then on the 15th, we have the new moon in Virgo and Mercury going direct, which is really, really interesting. Um, this new moon in Virgo is creating a lot of really interesting aspects and in earth signs. So this is going to be a really beautiful energy for you. You're going to be really feeling um, like you know, something is really flowing in terms of, again, the work that you're doing behind the scenes, financial investments, finances, um, you know, esoteric topics, and even home, family, and private life. It's like all kind of coming together here. And maybe your day-to-day -day work, your day-to-day -day health, your day-to-day -day routines. It's like, you know, things are finally coming together. There's some kind of new beginning. You're, you're feeling maybe cleansed or detoxed or purified in some way, and you're ready to kind of like get the ball rolling, right? And things are becoming clear. Mercury is no longer direct. You're no longer reflecting on things that you need to fix or clean up in your life, and you're finally moving forward. So then um, on the 23rd, the sun is going to enter your sign. Um, so there's definitely going to be a shift into like focusing more on you, focusing more on your identity, focusing more on what you want, focusing more on your body, your health, your appearance. So that's going to be really big too. You're going to have some of that throughout September, like before that, because Mars is in your sign. Um, so you could definitely be feeling that Mars energy in your sign, feeling a lot more assertive with how you're feeling or how you're thinking and uh, you know, just a lot more energy focusing on yourself. But then when the sun moves in, you're really going to be seeing that. So. Then on the 25th, we're going to have Jupiter trining Mercury again. Uh, so whatever information you get those first few days of the month are, is really coming back around right around the 25th. It's like things are becoming very, very clear. You get that last puzzle piece, you know, again, related to kind of what's going on behind the scenes versus what's going on in your, you know, financial sector. Um, and all of that's really kind of coming together. You're really kind of seeing it clearly and, you know, maybe you know, creating some kind of strategy or taking some kind of action or solving something in this area. So then on the 29th, the very last transit of the month is the Aries full moon. And this full moon is pretty freaking cray cray. I'm not going to lie to you. This full moon is a big deal. Probably the most challenging, I would say, aspect or event of the month. And I'm going to do a whole separate video on it towards the end of the month. So definitely make sure you're watching that because this is a big deal for you, Libra. Um, this full moon's happening in your seventh house of Aries, so this is going to be very relationship-based for you. And this full moon appears to be somewhat of a breaking off or an ending, um, a dissipating, a, you know, something, something being ended, you know, because of 
a sense of independence or sovereignty. And so the aspects that we have like coming into exact like coming into their exact aspect around this time, so South Node and Mars are gonna be coming in, um, they're gonna be squaring Pluto, and then we're gonna have Venus square Uranus. So this looks like you know, some really surprising and unexpected breakthroughs, but some power struggles as well. And so this full moon just looks crazy. But yeah, right around the 29th, maybe in the days leading up to it, there could be some kind of ending in a relationship. Um, doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, just some kind of significant relationship in your life. Um, it could also involve home, family, private life as well. But it's like there is some, some kind of ending or some kind of change happening here that is more directed on maybe another person's independence or sovereignty. If you are in a very happy relationship or marriage, then you know you don't need to, I'm not saying everybody's gonna break up if you're a Libra rising around this time. It could just be, you know, your partner is, you know, changing something in their life and going after something they want um, that's gonna that feels very good for them or that they want to do, you know, but like it's just a time that is very much centered around um independence, you know, instead of compromise and working together, right? And so, and there could be some challenges with that. It's like something needs to end. And so there's like something karmic that needs to end in terms of compromising, in terms of um, people pleasing, in terms of being overly considerate. Um, so we can do something that is more self-focused, right? And so that is what I'm seeing in the month of September for you. If you are a Libra rising, make sure to comment the word badass down below. If you stayed and watched this whole thing, I appreciate you. Um, and if you would like more from me, make sure to check out the description below. I have a Patreon where you can get more, you can ask questions. I'm doing a lot over there in September. And then I also do personal readings if you are interested. So all of that's linked down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Scorpio Risings in the His House, welcome to your September 2023 reading for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it, Scorpio. So for you this month, Scorpio, we have a lot going on in terms of your friendships, your network, your audience, your wishes and aspirations in life, um, the people that you connect with, the groups you're a part of, the crowds you're a part of, right? Whether online or in person or whatever, right? Like this is a time where you could really be focusing on networking, marketing, all of those things. And with Mercury retrograding here, you're really like discovering like, who are your people, right? And you're also really getting very clear about the details in this area as well. Um, you know, you're getting very clear about the things that need upgraded in this area, the things that need tweaked, changed, you know, alchemized in this area of your life, right? And you could also find that you are revising, reflecting, reorganizing this area of your life as well and finding simple solutions and simple fixes for small problems that, you know, you... That, that don't need this big fix. It's like a small solution can create a big result this month, right? And so that's what Virgo season is really all about. And so as we're stepping into September, like you're really learning how to clean up this area of your life. Like, are you like, where have things gotten kind of messy in terms of your network or your community or the groups that you belong to, the organizations you belong to, marketing, researching, networking, advertising, you know, all of these different topics could come up. But either way, it's something to do with other people, right? And so you're really realizing this month what needs to be cleaned up here. This could be a time where old acquaintances or people are coming back from the past. This could be a time where you're kind of weeding out uh, certain people that are just no longer aligned with you. Um, you know, you're going through your alliances, you're going through your allies, you're going through your collaborations. And so a lot of these things can be kind of coming up as you're reflecting on them this month, right? And so as we start the month, the very beginning of the month on the 4th, Venus is going to move direct. And um, this is great because Venus has been retrograding since the end of July. And she's been retrograding in your 10th house of career, your long-term go goals, your future, what you feel your purpose is, what you bring to the world, you know, um, what you wanna be when you grow up basically, right? Like what do you wanna do? Like how do you wanna give back to the world and all of that. So Venus has been retrograding here and you've been really reflecting on this. You've been really reflecting on your brand, your reputation, like how you put yourself out there, who you wanna be in the world and um, maybe your business, if you want a business, your 
career, um, you know, your path, your purpose, like your long-term shit, right? Like your, your big shit in life, basically, you've been reflecting on. And so now Venus is moving direct at the very beginning of September, right around the 4th. And so there's going to finally be this like integration and this forward momentum that begins to happen in this area of life. So you can finally feel like, okay, like all of these lessons I've been learning about confidence and validation and being seen and putting myself out there and being authentic and, you know, all of that in terms of your career, in terms of whatever it is that you do in the world or however it is that you give to the world on a, on a larger scale, like these are the lessons that you're going to be integrating and finally moving forward with by the fourth. So also right around the fourth, the first few days of the month as well, we're going to have Jupiter trining Mercury, which is really a, a great aspect that's really kind of showing us like how to solve a uh, bigger problem in a very easy or small, minute way. Like what, how, again, like a simple fix can, can make the world a difference, right? Now this is happening in your social houses of your 11th house and your seventh house. So it's likely going to deal with other people, right? Um, maybe you're doing an event or something like you and your partner, or you and your business partner, and you're trying to find a certain person, right? And it's like, you finally find that person or you find a way to, you know, um, get that person but not in a massive way that you thought you were going to, you know, like, I don't know, there's something here basically where you're solving a problem, um, you're finding a solution that's creating a lot of optimism in your relationships. Um, maybe you're meeting new people or you're introduced to someone that ends up really um, bringing in more fulfillment, more abundance, more pleasure within your relationships, or, um, you know, you and your partner um, are interacting with a new crowd or a new way of doing something in terms of marketing or networking or something like that. But there's something here that really starts clicking by the fourth um, or a solution or an idea that really starts coming in. And then by the sixth, you're getting even more clear because the sun is gonna come into its conjunction with Mercury retrograde, which is gonna create a Kazemi, which is a time of realizing things, like having big revelations about things. So you're gonna be getting really clear and having big revelations on what's next in this area of life in terms of friends, networking, marketing, you know, your hopes and aspirations in the world and how you, like your place in the whole, right? And so you're getting very, very clear on that. By the eighth, there could be a lot of ideas coming in, you know, or I'm sorry, by the sixth, there could be a lot of ideas coming in or there a solution that finally really hits you. And then, or even like a conversation or a message or news or communication from someone um, that, you know, really helps you realize what this Mercury retrograde is about for you. So then on the eighth, Jupiter and Taurus is going to try in the sun in Virgo. Um, this is also a really beautiful aspect. Like the first like week of the month is just really like the first half of the month is just really, really like, you know, optimistic, hopeful, like, you know, creating a lot of realizations and revelations and solutions, right? So on the eighth though, with the sun trining Jupiter, um, we're really going to be feeling that optimism, that faith, that big picture kind of energy, um, big ideals, like uh, big opportunities, you know, all of that could really be happening right around that time. Um, we're just feeling expansive, right? Um, especially in our social life, our connections and our relationships. So then on the new moon in Virgo um, on the 15th, we're gonna have um, Mercury going direct. So on the 15th, we have the new moon and Mercury going direct. This is a really amazing energy as well because the new moon is creating a lot of really positive aspects to all the planets and earth signs and it's creating a kite uh, as well with Neptune. So this shows me that there is a massive new beginning starting for all of us in an area of our lives. And so for you, this is your 11th house again of friendships, alliances, networking, marketing, groups of people, your hopes and aspirations. And also um, how you express yourself, your community, conversations, communications, relationships, significant relationships, and your passions. It's like you're really feeling driven and you're really feeling like, you know, you're going through some kind of new beginning or new upgrade and everything's becoming very clear and flowing around this new moon in uh, Virgo. Um, and Mercury is going direct. So you start really making sense of the weeks prior and the ideas and solutions and revelations that you've had and you can start finally moving forward on them and implementing them. So then on the 18th, um, I'm sorry, on the 23rd, <laughs> the sun is going to go into Libra. And so Libra season will begin. Now, as we begin Libra season, 
you know, this is your 12th house. So this is shining a light on the more subconscious areas of your life that maybe you've been neglecting, avoiding, or not dealing with. Um, old patterns, subconscious patterns, and habits, and cycles. So this is kind of going to be an energy of really seeing and realizing where you may need to take a step back in some areas. Um, you know, the sun going through the 12th house can be a time where we don't feel, especially with the sun being in fall in Libra and Libra being your 12th house, you may not, you may start noticing that you don't have as much energy to give um, once the sun moves into Libra and, and, you know, as we go into Libra season, it may not happen right away, but you may just notice that it may be more of a time of like resting and finding that internal balance and internal harmony. Sorry, this thing keeps wanting to go back and it's like aggravating me. Um, but it's more gonna, it's gonna be more about finding that internal balance, that internal harmony or that subconscious harmony, like taking a step back, resting more, uh, spending more time with your relationships and your loved ones, um, you know, like compromising it and just kind of, you know, it may be aggravating if you're doing a lot around that time, like publicly and in your life and all that. And that's still gonna be somewhat of a focus but it's like in order for you to feel good doing that, you also are going to need to balance out your internal world and your behind the scenes life. You know, um, you're also going to need to harmonize certain habits or behaviors or patterns that are karmic and just not really fulfilling you anymore, right? So on the 25th, Jupiter and Taurus is going to try and Mercury again for the final time, giving us that final like puzzle piece, idea, solution, problem solving kind of energy that's coming in um, where whatever bits and pieces we've been getting throughout the month are going to really wrap up at that point, kind of come full circle by the 25th. So then on the 29th, we have the Aries full moon, which is, in my opinion, the most challenging aspect of the month because this Aries full moon looks cray cray. Um, this is in your sixth house for you. If you're a Scorpio rising, um, it could bring up themes of confrontation. It could bring up themes of needing to let something go, needing to release or surrender something, um, needing to let go of subconscious habits or patterns of being overly considerate or um, overly compromising, caring what other people think too much, this, that, and the other, and needing to kind of do what's best for you independently in your work, in your day-to-day -day life, in your day-to-day -day routines. Could also be a time of just like really letting go of karmic ties and karmic patterns in your life and karmic cycles in your life in order to really step into your confidence and leadership in your work and in your day-to-day -day routines, health, and all of that schedule. So um, it is, there's gonna be a lot of other aspects around that time that are coming into alignment. So um, it's going to be a little bit of a power struggle and a little bit of a, a kinda turbulent uh, full moon, but I'm gonna do a separate video on that towards the end of the month. You don't wanna miss it because Mars is involved and Mars is your ruler, your ruling planet, your chart ruler. So anyways, <laughs> that is what is coming in September. Most of the month is pretty freaking amazing. Um, it just ends on that very kinda like, you know, intense note with that Aries full moon where it seems like we're making a decision to step into more of our sovereignty in some way, or at least someone else is making a decision to do that. And so um, anyway, so let me know what you think down below if you're a Scorpio rising, if you feel like this is resonating. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And uh, if you stayed all the way through, comment the word badass down below. If you'd like to get a personal reading with me to really see what the hell is going on in your life or your chart or get to know yourself better, that is always linked down below as well. If you'd like to learn astrology, my astrology course is linked down below. If you'd like, like to for real learn in astrology once and for all in a very simple and relatable way. Um, that's always linked down below. Also, I do a lot of astrology, astrology stuff over on my Patreon. You can learn a lot more there. I also like, you know, kind of weave it into just how we see it playing out in life, how we see it playing out in, you know, for spiritual and we live spiritual lives, self-development, healing, all of that. So um, anyways, go follow me on there if you're interested. It's only $5 a month. I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Sagittarius rising in the his out. So let's go ahead and talk about September for you if you're a Sagittarius rising. So this month, a lot, this month, if I could talk, is a lot about you cleaning shit up in your career, your brand, your reputation, your long-term goals. You know, you really reflecting on this area of life, reorganizing, really going kind of through everything, combing through everything and figuring out what's not working, doing a lot of problem solving in this area, what you feel your long-term goals are, what you feel your purpose is, what you feel, you know, your, your bigger vision is in life, your path, right? Like what needs to be rearranged, reorganized, um, kind of, 
you know, just kind of reflected on in this area for you to like, you know, solve some, solve some problems, man, you know, go through and really create new solutions and things that are not working, right? Like fixing things that are broken in this area is really the name of the game right now. So if you've been really struggling in your career or feeling kind of disconnected, or there's something that's just not really working efficiently for you, this is a time of really finding out how to make things run smoothly again, right? How to fix things in a way where they are working more efficiently for you and feel more aligned for you, right? That's what September is all about if you are a Sag rising. And so we start off September though, right on the fourth with Venus going direct in the sign of Leo. So you've been really reflecting on, uh, you know, your belief systems, your long-term goals, your educational pursuits, your travel pursuits, you know, your outlook on life. Um, and where you find like that sense of power and confidence and meaning and purpose in your life, right? And so with Venus finally going direct, a lot of the lessons you've been learning here since the end of July are gonna start coming full circle. And then also right on those first few days of the month as well, we have Jupiter trining Mercury, which is giving you a long-term vision, a long-term goal about the work that you wanna do in the world, how you wanna give to the world, how you wanna give back to the world, how you wanna be in service to the world, but also how to tweak certain things. And like, like you know, small solutions can create a really big result at this time, right? A small shift in thinking in your vision or your long-term vision can create a really big result in the work that you're doing and the task that you're doing and your schedule and your routine, your health, etc. And so this is kind of the name of the game this month if you're a Sag rising, um, but you're really gonna be seeing that the first few days of the month and then also at the end of the month, which we'll get to in a minute. So then right on the sixth, the sun and Mercury are gonna come into their Kazemi uh, in the sign of Virgo in the 10th house. And so this really is a time of like realizing the bigger goal, realizing the long-term goal, realizing what needs to be fixed, realizing what needs to be solved, realizing, you know, just realizing something about your long-term goals, your career, your, your future, how you wanna give back to the world, who you wanna be in the world, your brand, your reputation, all of that, and what needs to be shifted here. Like, what do you need to clean up in this area of your life? Like, that's gonna become very crystal clear to you by the sixth. So then on the eighth, we're also gonna have the sun trining Jupiter now from Virgo to your sixth. Um, so we're really gonna have this kind of, you're gonna have this kind of big light bulb moment and this kind of really optimistic, ideal, like idealistic kind of thinking happening where you're really seeing the bigger vision, you're really seeing the bigger goal, you're really seeing, um, you know, certain opportunities, you're, you're having like creative, uh, creative breakthroughs in your career and work life. And so that's what this month is really a lot about for you as well, Sagittarius. So on the 15th, we're gonna have the Virgo new moon and Mercury direct, really, really great time. This Virgo new moon is making a lot of positive aspects in earth signs. So it's really lighting up the earth uh, houses in your chart, which are your second, sixth, and 10th. And so the money, uh, the money, honey, your work, your day-to-day -day work and schedule and your career and long-term goals and vision are all really coming together and flowing together harmoniously. Um, it's also creating a kite with Neptune uh, in your fourth house. So this could also be a time where you're really releasing and letting go of uh, certain things in terms of your home and family, um, maybe forgiving certain things, but you're, it's like everything's flowing and it's really giving this new sense of life, you know, um, to these areas of your life. So then on the 18th, um, or I'm sorry, the 23rd, we're going to have the sun moving into Libra. And this is your 11th house of your, you know, communities, network, socializing, friends, acquaintances, allies, collaborations, alliances, your hopes and wishes, you know, this is kind of the, the areas of the 11th house. So you're going to start seeing a big increase in those topics as we move into Libra season. And then on the 25th, uh, Jupiter is going to try and Mercury again for the final time. And this is where, like I said, you know, a few minutes ago, things are going to really start clicking. Things are going to really start making sense. You know, you're going to start really seeing solutions to problems. And this final trine that we have between Jupiter and Mercury is like that final light bulb moment of where you're finally implementing all of the different ideas and the different realizations that you've had. And so you're getting that kind of final click, you know, that final puzzle piece is really coming in on the 25th or at least the, a couple days leading up to it. So then on the 29th, we have the probably the most challenging transit of September. September is a really beautiful month full of a lot of really big revelations and, and solutions kind of coming in. But on the 29th, we have the Aries full moon. Now for you, you're lucky this is more in your fifth house, which is a, a you know decent place to have this. It's fun and playful and childlike. Um, but the problem is, is that this Aries full moon is coming with some power struggles 
and uh, a lot of letting go, releasing, dissipating, endings kind of energy. It can be a little intense. The energy can be a little intense. It seems like you know, you've know you been dealing with, by the end of the month, you're dealing with some kind of challenges or conflict around keeping the peace, keeping the harmony um, in a group, network, friend, social situation to some extent, right? An organization, marketing, you know, something like that, maybe even a charity or a cause that you're a part of. Um, but, you know, the problem is, is you're having trouble really keeping the, the middle ground there. And so this is going to be a time that's going to really push you back to finding what's aligned with you and your heart and not so much about what everybody else thinks. So you're kind of seeing certain karmic cycles, karmic patterns in terms of other people in your life or certain social situations that you're a part of and this full moon is coming in to help you realize what's really on your heart what's really aligned with you right and what's best for you um how to step into your sovereignty right and so that's kind of how we're ending the month <laughs> and then we're entering into eclipse season which is great so um yeah so that's what i'm seeing for you if you're a sag rising let me know down below if you can see a lot of these things happening this month i'd really love to hear your feedback let me know comment the word badass down below along with your rising sign so i know that you watched your whole horoscope i appreciate you also if you would like more from me check the description below i do a lot of other things post and other places. Um, I also have a Patreon community that you can join if you really like my videos and my horoscopes. It's only $5 a month. You can support my channel by joining it. You also get a ton of other free content related to astrology, self-development, etc. I also do personal readings. If you would like my eyes on your chart and your life to figure out what the hell is going on with you in your life right now, you can book that down below. I also have an astrology course um, where you can learn astrology for freaking good, <laughs> relatable, actual, practical astrology so check that out down below too if you're interested thank you guys so so much for watching i truly truly appreciate you and i will see you in the next one bye Alrighty, capricorn rising in the his house welcome to your september 2023 horoscope for the month ahead let go so september for you is a month where you are having a lot of really big intellectual uh conversations a lot of really big intellectual ideas a lot of really big intellectual solutions coming in a lot of big ideals basically um you are really kind of reflecting on your belief systems your outlook uh on the world at large your place in the world you know what gives you meaning and purpose your morals you know your long-term education travel pursuits, you know, all of that. This could be a month where you're really reflecting on certain belief systems. And, you know, if you're in the middle of learning something new, taking a new course, um, all of that, you could be coming back to old belief systems, old, you know, things that you've learned before, old practices, um, old techniques, you know, farthering kind of your education, your intellectual capacity. That's really what this is about in September. You're going to have a lot of light bulb moments. You're going to have a lot of uh, real big ideals coming in and solutions on how to really get to a place that feels purposeful and meaningful to you again, right? And so that's really what September is about for you if you're a Capricorn rising. So let's get into it. We start off the month on the 4th with Venus finally going direct. So Venus has been retrograding in your 8th house of other people's money finances, shared resources and finances, investments, business, debt. So you've been really kind of reflecting on a lot of these areas and where maybe you haven't been all the way confident in these areas or with some of these things and how to really get realigned here in a way that feels good to you, right? Um, this could have been dealing with other people's money or other people's finances or relationships involving finances or connections and investments and things like that. And really kind of finding you know, certain things that feel better in this area, right? So that's happening. Venus is going direct. So you're going to finally start moving forward and applying the lessons that you've learned in this area after the fourth. So then also right around the fourth and the few days leading up to it, we're going to have Mercury retrograde trining Jupiter, which is really bringing in this sense of optimism, you know, this sense of seeing things at a higher level, seeing a bigger solution, seeing, um, you know, things that kind of like a problem solving energy, right? That's coming in. It's like you're seeing something from a bigger perspective. You're, you're really getting into your creativity, your passions, the things that you love, the things that really create fulfillment in your heart, you know, like your childlike uh, passions and, and, you know, hobbies and things like that. 
And um, you're, this is also really connecting with like your outlook on the world, your belief systems, your educational pursuits in some way. And you're really reflecting on that right around the beginning of the month. So then on the sixth, we're gonna have the Sun Mercury Kazemi. And so this is gonna be a massive light bulb moment showing you what this Mercury retrograde is about. So there could be some news that comes in, there could be uh, an epiphany that you have, a realization that you have, um, a communication, you know, um, a decision that you're trying to make, but you're seeing something very, very clear by the eight or by the sixth so watch out for that so then on the eighth Jupiter is going to trine the Sun which is going to create a lot of optimism a lot of hope a lot of expansion um, a lot of fulfillment you're feeling very lit up you're feeling very fulfilled in terms of your creative endeavors you know matters of the heart um, maybe your romantic life or dating life or children um, but either way it's like you're feeling very lit up on a heart level and that's really kind of feeding into your bigger vision for your life your outlook where you find meaning and purpose your educational pursuits travel pursuits etc so then on the 15th we have the Virgo new moon which is creating a massive new beginning of finally moving forward and taking all these lessons all these light bulb moments all these realizations all these revelations all these problem solving kind of energies and finally moving forward with them um, because Mercury is going direct right around this new moon as well. And so there's finally this sense of newness coming in and this new moon is in a very positive aspect with Pluto and your sign and um, all like the earth signs in general. And so it's really lighting up this sense of feeling and flow in a certain area of your life with your spiritual endeavors, with your belief systems, with your... Um, you know, your passions and matters of the heart and with yourself, right? Um, so then uh, on the 23rd, we, we're going to have the sun moving into the sign of Libra. Um, so there's going to be a focus shift towards your career, towards your long-term goals, towards your rep rep reputation, towards your brand, towards, you know, all of the things that you want to do and create in your life and in the world. And so that's going to be kind of more of the shift as we get to the end of the month and into October. So then on the 25th, we have Mercury trying Jupiter again for the last time, creating kind of this final puzzle piece moment of figuring things out, right? And so that's on the 25th. And then on the 29th, we're gonna have the Aries full moon, which is probably the most challenging aspect that we have in September because this full moon looks crazy. Um, it is going to be pretty intense and it's happening in your fourth house of home and family. So there's this time of really like maybe some kind of ending closure or big revelation or change coming in with your home and family sector, with your private life, with maybe your past and doing something that feels right to you, like going your own way, right? Paving your own path, um, doing something for yourself instead of so much for other people, right? And so this could be a time where you have been trying to harmonize certain challenges in terms of your career in terms of your public life in terms of your long-term goals but it's like you know your home family private life um, needs your attention for some reason or you are like you know what I can't please everybody I need to do what's best for me and right now I feel like going and you know just being at home and not dealing with the world right now like because that's what I feel like doing you know something like that could happen so let me know down below though Capricorn Rising if this resonates with you I would really really appreciate your feedback and um, comment the word badass down below if you stayed the whole way if you would like more from me see the description below I do personal readings I have a patreon where you can get so much more for five dollars a month from me so go check that out if you're interested I love you and I will see you in the next one Bye. Alrighty, Aquarius Risings, this uh, upcoming month for you of September is so, so much about really sorting out your financial sector. <laughs> you are getting down and dirty and in the weeds and really weeding things out that are not working for you, really reflecting on your long-term goals with your finances, investments, your financial future, where you need to get more serious here, be a little bit more practical here, and where you can really reorganize things to find just a simple solution that can create a really big result, right? And so that is what this month is really all about for you. It's really going through and doing the work on your financial situation and really getting clear on what your goals are, how your current choices and actions are working either for you or against you in terms of your finances, investments, and long-term wealth goals money that's owed to you or money that you owe to other people you know business debt all of those topics are going to be really big this month but there's a lot of really positive transits happening this month in this area for you so it's like you're finally seeing a light at the end of the tunnel you're finally seeing what needs to change you're finally seeing what you need to reorganize and uh, it's it's becoming easier and easier as you move along so 
right when we start September on the 4th, Venus is finally going direct in the sign of Leo. So all of the wonky relationship, friendship, weird social stuff that you've been going through is finally coming to an end and you are finally able to start moving forward and really implementing the lessons you've been learning in terms of relationships and what they mirror back to you about yourself, right? And so if you've been really reflecting on your relationships, really getting clear about what you want and desire in a partner or another person, maybe you've been going back and you know, getting back to the basics in terms of your current relationships and falling in love with them again. Maybe some of you have went through some, you know, endings in relationships or whatever, right? But all that phase is really coming to an end now. So you can finally start moving forward and learning and integrating the lessons that you've learned since the end of July. So then also on the 4th and the few days leading up to it, we're going to have Mercury trining Jupiter um, from your 8th house to your 4th house. So it really looks like there are uh, some things happening here in terms of your finances and in terms of your home family and private life and so this could be you know that you are finally saving for a big goal or you're reflecting on your long-term goals in terms of your home family and finances um, something like that but there's something really coming in here that you're feeling very idealistic and optimistic about in those first few days of the month or that you're really going back and trying to resolve and, and problem solve with right so then on the sixth we're gonna have the mercury sun Kazemi the sun's going to conjunct mercury retrograde and and this is going to be getting you very, very clear. It's going to be bringing in a lot of clarity, a lot of news, a lot of insight. You know, something's becoming very clear. You're realizing something about your financial sector, your financial goals, your investments, business, debt, wealth, etc. So you can finally like see what this Mercury retrograde is really trying to have you look at. Um, you're really going to realize it by the sixth, and it's going to help you get very clear here. So then on the eighth, we're going to have Jupiter and the Sun coming into their trine, um, and so again, just a lot of idealism, a lot of optimism in terms of what's possible for you financially with your investment investments with your business with you know your your money and uh, your financial connections in terms of your home living you know arrangements um, you know this could also deal with real estate property home family personal life etc so you're feeling very idealistic you know about this you're feeling very lit up by this like it just feels very expansive you know maybe you're moving or you're investing on a property or you're looking into it you know there's something here that just feels very expansive in these areas of life so then on the 15th, the new beginning finally really, really begins in terms of your financial sector. It's like, you know, up until that point, you're reflecting, you're getting bits and pieces of revelations and information and ideas and, you know, you're problem solving and you're reorganizing. But then on the 15th, it's like everything finally starts because we have the new moon in Virgo and Mercury is going direct. And so it's like you finally get that new start. You're finally getting very, very clear on what the path forward is. And you can start implementing the things that you've learned over the last few weeks beforehand. So then on the 23rd, we're gonna have the sun coming into Libra, uh, which is your ninth house. And so there's gonna be kind of a spotlight on your belief systems, your outlook on life, your long-term goals, um, you know, your political views, your religious views, your educational pursuits, your travel pursuits, you know, where you find meaning and purpose in the world and what you feel a part of in the world, um, finding balance in this area, finding fairness in this area, all of that's gonna really, really come uh, come up as we get to the 23rd and move into October. So then on the 25th, we're going to have Mercury trining Jupiter again uh, for the final time. And this is that kind of final puzzle piece, that final um, bit of inspiration, bit of optimism um, really coming in, that kind of problem solving kind of energy really coming in that you're getting very, very clear on. It's like that final puzzle piece hits and you're finally really clear on the details that you know need to be resolved in order for you to really move forward with some of the bigger goals and things that you have. So then on the 29th, we have probably the most challenging uh, event of the month, which is the Aries full moon. It's going to be a pretty intense full moon. There's a lot going on right around the time of this full moon, but this is happening in your third house, which really isn't a bad place to have it, honestly. Um, but this definitely could deal with facing some conflict in your day-to-day -day life and in your day-to-day -day environments and surroundings or changing things up, making a big change to do what's best for you, um, to do what feels like the independent and sovereign thing for you to do. So this could be a time where we are noticing a lot of conflicts, a lot of back and forth. You could find yourself getting in debates with people or being very opinionated, but it's like whatever's going on right at the end of the, of the month around this Aries full moon, there could be somewhat of like a little bit of a power struggle happening, but it's like time to really assert 
your opinion. It's time to really assert yourself in a situation within your community, within your neighborhood, within your day-to-day -day life and the people, places, and things that you're around on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is what I'm seeing for the month ahead for you. If you're an Aquarius rising, definitely let me know down below if you see a lot of these things resonating. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. And um, also comment the word badass down below with your rising sign if you watch all the way through. And then also, if you like more from me, make sure to check the description below. I do a lot more. I have a membership over on Patreon where you can get a lot more. You can learn a lot more in depth. I go over a lot of different things. I relate them to self-development and actual real life experiences and all of that. So if you like that, make sure to sign up. It's only $5 a month. I also do personal readings if you're interested. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Pisces rising in the his house. So welcome to your September 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So Pisces, September for you is a lot about your relationships. Okay, boo. This is a time where if you're a Pisces rising, you are really, really going to see a lot of themes coming up in terms of your relationships, your significant relationships in your life, whether it's a marriage, a friendship, you know, a business partner, whatever significant relationships you have in your life are really, really the focus for this month. And you're cleaning shit up here, right? Where have you, where have things not been up to your standard? You know, like where have things quite not been, not been quite up to your standards, you know, like where do you need to reflect, reorganize some of the dynamics that are going on within your relationships? Maybe you're noticing that if you are in a committed relationship, your partner could be reorganizing, rethinking, reflecting on some things in their life, you know, but either way, it's like you're really kind of taking a look at your relationships this month and figuring out some things, learning some things, realizing some things, seeing how, you know, you can problem solve in this area. You know, and also you could notice themes of perfectionism coming up, critique coming up in terms of relationships and how to resolve those kinds of things as well. So that is what this month is all about for you, Pisces. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we start off this month with Venus direct on the 4th of September. So Venus is finally moving forward. She's been retrograding in your sixth house of work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. So you've been really reflecting on your values in those areas, what you want in those areas, your confidence in those areas, maybe themes of like validation or being seen in those areas being authentic in those areas. Um, so you've been really having to go back and reflect on this, your relationships with work, all of that as well. But now Venus is finally moving forward on the fourth. And so you're finally moving forward in this area. It's like you're integrating all the lessons that you've learned and you're moving the fuck on basically. So also right around that time, we're going to have Jupiter trining Mercury. So you can feel this the first few days of the month, um, Jupiter and Mercury coming into their trine from your seventh house to your third house. So this really looks like, you know, you and a partner or a significant relationship in your life are having, you know, big conversations. You're seeing, you know, uh, bigger ideals together. You're seeing the bigger picture together. You're looking at it from a new perspective or seeing a more optimistic view on something, right? There could also be something really optimistic or expansive or fulfilling that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis with your partner, maybe a project you're working on, an environment that you're in, something like that, that is really bringing you together and creating a flow there in those first few days of the month. But you're getting a lot of ideas, you're problem solving, you're realizing things, your mindset is maybe shifting to be more expansive. So um, that's really gonna what you're gonna see the first few days of the month. So then we get to the sixth and we're gonna have the Mercury Kazemi where Mercury retrograde is gonna conjunct the sun. So you're really realizing what this Mercury retrograde is about right around the sixth, okay? Like this could be news or a conversation, a revelation, like seeing something very clearly an aha moment an epiphany really to do with your relationships or maybe your partner or a significant person in your life so really pay attention on the six to what comes up so then on the eighth we're gonna have the sun then trining jupiter from your seventh to your third again really bringing in this really big expansive energy in terms of your relationships your environments certain activities that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis your your community your surroundings and the significant people in your life. So that's gonna be very exciting as well. This could be like big conversations or big plans that you're making, things like that. So then on the 15th, we finally have like the real new beginning of the month where everything really starts moving forward and taking off. We're gonna have the new moon in Virgo in your seventh house again, of relationships. So there's kind of this new beginning, everything you've been seeing, working on, realizing, problem solving, you know, for the few weeks before that is really coming full circle at this new moon. And Mercury is going direct right around this new moon as well. So you're really gonna start having that forward momentum. Things are gonna start landing, making sense even more. Um, you know, everything's gonna start really moving forward at that time. 
So then on the 23rd, the sun is going to move into Libra, which is going to begin Libra season, and you're going to notice more of a spotlight and focus on your finances, your shared finances and resources with your partner, um, their finances. Um, also, maybe, you know, just any kind of financial situation that you have with another person where you're connecting with another person, share finances or resources with another person, investments, any kind of financial ties are really going to really start coming up here. So then on the 25th, we're going to have Mercury trining Jupiter again for the final time um, from your seventh to your third again. So this is kind of that final click, that final puzzle piece that you're really getting when it comes to your relationships, your environment, your surroundings, your ideas you know, the events, situations, et cetera, that you're finding yourself in on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything's really going to start making sense. And then on the 29th, we have the final event of the month, which is a little bit more of a rockier one. It is the Aries full moon, and it is happening in your second house of finances, income, resources, et cetera, while Mars is going to be coming near, near the south node in your eighth house. So this is a big full moon that could bring up some endings, some closures, some big changes um, financially and how you relate with others financially and what you share with others financially or resource wise. This could be a time where you're really being pushed to do something for you that you want, but that other people may not entirely agree with. It's like you have to stop caring so much about what other people think about what you want to do. It's kind of that kind of energy. It's like you're trying to balance out compromise and, you know, keep the peace or keep the middle ground with other people financially. But this time it's like, OK, you need to focus on you or do you financially. Right. Um, that's kind of what is being brought up around this full moon. So just pay attention to that on the end of the month. And that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if this resonated. Comment the word badass with your rising sign. If you watch this whole thing, I appreciate you. Um, also, if you would like more from me, make sure to see the description below. Follow me on socials, um, all of that jazz. I also have a membership over on Patreon for just $5 a month where you can get way more, ask questions, all of that. Join our tribe over there on Patreon. I also do personal readings if you're interested. And yeah, thank you guys for watching Pisces and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Aries Risings in the His House. This is for you, boo. Let's go ahead and get into it. So September 2023 for you is all about cleaning up your mother effing life, baby. <laughs> Getting back into the habits, the routines. Woo, that train is loud. Hold on. Getting back into the habits, the routines, the schedules, the tasks, you know, that really help you, that help you stay uh, aligned, that help you mentally, that help you accomplish things, right? And so this is going to be a time where you're really getting back into a routine. You're really getting back into the groove with your health, your diet, maybe exercise, routines, schedules, etc. your work, right? You're really reflecting on your work. You're really reflecting on all of these things so you can start feeling more clear here. That is what this month is really all about. You're really cleaning your shit up in this area uh, because maybe you've gotten away from it. Maybe you've developed some habits, you know, maybe you've developed some patterns, some cycles where you've been like neglecting certain things. And so September is really getting you back into the nitty gritty. Pay attention to the little details. They matter. They can create a really, really big difference this month. Okay. So starting off September, September, we're going to have Venus going direct in your fifth house. She's been retrograding since the end of July. And so you've been going back and really reflecting on your heart's desires, what you want, what you desire, what turns you on, what, what lights you up, what you want in terms of dating and relationships, you know, finding that passion and fun again in romance and all of that, you know, doing creative hobbies, getting creative, um, you know, your relationship with your inner child, your relationship with your own children, right? Like all of these things could have been things that you've been reflecting on and reading evaluating over the last uh you know a little over a month now but with venus moving direct on the 4th of september you're really going to start implementing all these things that you've learned and be able to move forward um, and then also on the 4th we're going to have mercury retrograde in virgo trining jupiter in taurus so you could really be feeling this the first few days of the month where there is kind of this um big idealism, big optimism coming in where you're really kind of seeing the bigger picture in terms of what's possible for you in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day job, your routines, your tasks, your schedules and how that can create a flow for you financially or bring in more, bring in more abundance for you financially, how that can be really great for your resources, et cetera. 
So then on the 6th, we're going to have the Mercury Kazemi. So Mercury retrograde is going to align with the sun in your sixth house. So this is going to be really big. This could be an opportunity, communications coming in, um, you know, an offer or some news that you get um, that really sheds some light on what this Mercury retrograde is trying to get you to realize about your work, health, day to day routines. So you're going to get very clear about maybe how to solve something or you're going to get a revelation or a light bulb moment or maybe, again, some news or something like that that really makes things clear for you um, on what the path is in terms of your work, health, and day-to-day -day routine. So then on the 8th, the sun in Virgo is then going to try in Jupiter in your second house. So this is really lighting up, again, maybe an opportunity, an offer in terms of your job, in terms of financially, maybe a raise or a way to bring in more, make more, etc. It's like, you know, your hard work is paying off and feels very in flow with your abundance, finances, resources, priorities, etc. So then on the 15th, we are going to have the Virgo new moon. This is a new start, a fresh start, new beginning of us finally moving forward because Mercury is also going direct right around this new moon. And so this is a new start in your work life, in your health, in your routines, in your habits, in your schedules, where you're finally moving forward. Things are finally clicking, making sense. Everything's going together. And yeah, it's a really beautiful new moon that's really vibing with all the earth signs. So um, you're really going to see this forward momentum, this new beginning that affects your career career that affects your finances and that really has you um, seeing the bigger vision seeing the bigger dream in these areas so then on the 23rd Libra season begins the sun's going to move into Libra so there's going to be a massive spotlight and focus on your seventh house of relationships other people you know your significant relationships in your life and then on the 25th Mercury is going to trine Jupiter again for the final time from your sixth to your second house. And so this is kind of that final puzzle piece, that final light bulb moment, that final opportunity of you feeling like there's something bigger and better going on, of you feeling very expanded in terms of your work, the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and how it is bringing in more financially or how it is affecting your priorities and your values um, on a grand scale and bringing in more optimism, hope, and faith. So then on the 29th, we're gonna have the Aries full moon. Now this is probably the more challenging aspect of the month because everything else is just really great this month, honestly. But um, so this Aries full moon is gonna be intense. Aries full moons are intense, but this one is really intense because Mars is gonna be coming up on the south node for this full moon. So this is a very big breaking free of something karmic, something that may feel trapped or stuck or chained in terms of your relationships and doing what's best for you. So if you've been trying to keep the peace, if you've been trying to solve an issue with significant relationships or just a significant relationship in your life, if you've been trying to overcome challenges, find the middle ground, compromise, around this area's full moon, you're going to be like, fuck it, I'm doing me, right? Like, and it could be a little bit of a power struggle. It could bring in a little bit of a power struggle, but it's like, you have to do what's best for you. You have to like step into your leadership, step into your sovereignty, step into your independence, right? And that's what this full moon is really going to be about. Like, how can you find your independence and release old patterns or habits or whatever that are like keeping you out of your independence, right? Something like that could happen or you could be finding a new way to step into your independence. Um, not really a new way, I guess, but remembering how to step into your independence while also finding the balance with other people, right? And so, but yeah, this Aries full moon looks crazy. I'm gonna do a separate video on that around that time. But that is what we have for September, uh, Aries risings. <laughs> um, hopefully this related, let me know down below if you can see a lot of these things happening. Comment the word badass if you watched your whole horoscope along with your rising sign. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback and what you thought. Also, if you would like more from me, see the description below. I have a Patreon where I offer a lot more. You can get a lot more for $5 a month. I also do personal readings. I have an astrology course, all of that down below in the description. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Taurus darling, welcome to your horoscope for the month ahead for you if you're a Taurus rising. So September for you, Taurus, is a lot about really getting back to certain projects, crafts, hobbies, creative things that you love, things that really feel good to your heart, right? Like getting back to playing more, being more childlike, doing things that really make you feel good, right? Whether it's in dating, relationships, love, romance, with yourself, right? With your children, like 
all of that. So it's really kind of cleaning up this part of your life that is really heart focused and really kind of reorganizing, reflecting, rethinking, getting back into old hobbies, old crafts, etc., and really reflecting on what can change in this area of life. So this is a really kind of fun month for you where you're really getting back to the things that you love. You know, you're really reevaluating the things that you love, what you want, what you desire, and how you can make moves to get back there. How you can rearrange things, reorganize things, so you can kind of get back there and start enjoying your life more again. So let's get into it. So Taurus, we start off the month with Venus, your ruling planet, your chart ruler, if you're a Taurus rising, going direct in your fourth house of Leo. And... Um, <clears throat> This is very much, you know, about you finally integrating the lessons that you've been learning since the end of July and moving forward. So Venus has been retrograde since the end of July, where you've been really going back, rethinking, reflecting, um, you know, re really going back over what you really want in terms of your home, family, personal and private life, what your values are here, right? Like you've been really maybe going within, you've been maybe... Uh, really rethinking what you want in terms of your home, your house, like where you live, um, you know, like what feels at home, what feels safe for you, your relationships um, with the people that you live with, your living situation, etc. And so this has been a time where you've really been reflecting on that. And so with Venus going direct on September 4th, you're finally moving forward with a lot of these lessons and integrating what you've learned. So then also right around the 4th and the few days fall or the few days leading up to the 4th, I should say, Mercury retrograde is going to be coming into a trine with Jupiter and Taurus from your fifth house to your first house. So this is a time where you're really realizing, you know, how you want to move forward, what your bigger vision is in terms of your art, in terms of your creativity, in terms of the things that you love. Like I said, this is really feeling expansive, really feeling like, um, optimistic about what you're doing moving forward. Maybe a part of you or a part of your identity is going into something that you love, like maybe you're expressing yourself in new ways, right? And then on the sixth, we're going to have Mercury and the sun coming into their Kazemi, also in your fifth house of love, romance, children, sexuality as well. Um, so this can be a time where you're having some realizations around these things, like where you're starting to really see clearly what needs to change or what needs to shift in terms of the things that you love, art, crafts, you know, dating, love, romance, entertainment, like projects that you're working on, you're getting very clear, like something is coming in in this area of life and, and showing you something right around the sixth. So then on the eighth, the sun's going to come into its trine with Jupiter. So from your fifth to your first again, again, this really expansive, big picture kind of energy coming in, you're feeling maybe very creative, very inspired, very lit up. Um, and you're really putting, you know, like it's like you're seeing a clear path forward in terms of, again, those fifth house themes of love, creativity, uh, your crafts, your projects, etc. So then right around the 15th, we have the new moon of the month, which is really bringing in this new, fresh new chapter, right? And this is really, really starting again in that fifth house area of you so for you. So it's like whatever you've been working on, whatever you've been reevaluating, whatever you've been going back and perfecting and improving and learning about and having realizations about is really coming to light at this time. And Mercury is also going direct right around the 15th. So you're gonna have this new chapter beginning where you're moving forward with a lot of those lessons and a lot of the, the problems that you've solved, a lot of the issues that you fixed, you're finally moving on with that. So then on the 23rd, Libra season begins. This is your sixth house. So there's going to be a massive spotlight that starts to happen from the 23rd and moving into October on your work, your health and your day-to-day -day routines and schedules and how to really balance that out and harmonize that and see new ways of looking at it. And so that's kind of going to be the name of the game after the 23rd. So then on the 25th, Mercury and Jupiter are going to try and for their final time again from your fifth house to your first house, really creating some big insight, some more expansion, really bringing in more of this like uh, problem solving kind of energy. It's like that final puzzle piece really comes in on the 25th to do again with things that you're working on, your creativity, your projects, your passions, your hobbies, um, maybe children, romance, dating, your love life. It's like something really big and really opportunistic. Um, it's like doors are opening here. You're feeling like this fresh kind of, you know, vibe in this area, I guess. So then on the 29th, we have the more difficult transit of the month, which is the full moon in Aries. This is a very wild and crazy and intense um, full moon that we're going to have at the very end of the month in Aries. There's a lot of things going on at the time of this full moon that are making it that way. So that's why I say that this is happening in your 12th house Taurus. So 
this is some kind of intense ending happening in your life, some kind of intense releasing, some kind of intense journey that you may feel you need to go on for yourself. It's like your time to kind of be selfish. It's like your time to kind of be independent, your time to kind of maybe go your own way instead of trying to figure everything out for everyone else and your work, your health, your day-to-day -day life, your coworkers, you know, et cetera. It's like you are like there's something that you need to do for you. There's a spotlight that's being shined at the very end of the month on maybe certain habits, cycles, addictions that you need to face, you know, certain conflicts that you've been running from that you need to face. Um, and yeah, so that's how we end the month. <laughs> and then in October, we're entering eclipse season. So October is a very big month. So enjoy a lot of the beautiful energy that we have this month. Jupiter is so involved this month. So it's really going to be an enjoyable month where we're really getting clear on a lot. We're figuring out a lot. We're seeing a lot of the answers. We're getting inspired, seeing the big picture, feeling more expansive in a lot of the areas of our lives. So anyways, Taurus, comment the word badass down below if you stayed and watched your whole horoscope. I appreciate you. If you would like more from me, check the description below. I have an astrology course um, that you can get if you'd like to learn easy, relatable astrology. I also have my membership over on Patreon. You can get more content, ask questions, join our little community over on Patreon for just $5 a month. And I also do personal readings if you would like a reading really going over what is going on in your life personally with your chart, etc. So I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Gemini Risings, welcome to your September 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So if you are a Gemini Rising, this month of September is so much about reorganizing your life at home and getting your shit together on the home front, getting your shit together in your personal life, your private life, what's going on behind closed doors, right? If you're finding that you're having a lot of issues in other areas of your life, this may be why. This is a time of really kind of like getting clear on your foundation, right? Like weeding out what's not working at home, weeding out things going on at home and really getting clear on what needs to be fixed, solved, um, what needs to be rearranged, what needs to be alchemized, you know, all of these kinds of things are really huge. So you could be finding that you're fixing a lot at home. Maybe you're working on a home project. Maybe you are reorganizing, rearranging. Maybe you are, you know, in the process of getting ready to move. You know, it's like a time of really just getting your, your shit cleaned up at home and family and with family and, and in your personal life, your private life, like the things that you don't just share with everybody, right? Like what's going on there that needs to be fixed that needs to be resolved where you need to get your shit together right that's what september is a lot about you're gonna have a lot of help doing this though so it's not like something like hardcore i'm not like trying to say that in a way like you need to get your shit together you know but like <laughs> it is something you're gonna have a lot of help with because jupiter is going to be involved and um, there's just a lot of really positive transits in the month of september a lot of really fresh new beginnings so let's go ahead and get into it but so as we start off the month, we're going to have Mercury retrograde trining Jupiter those first four days of the month. So we're really going to be feeling optimistic. We're really going to be looking at the big picture, having a lot of big ideals and really seeing how we can go back and reflect on things and reorganize things, rearrange things in a way that feels like it is bringing in the most opportunity in our lives for our long term visions and goals. And so for you, this is really happening again with your home, family and personal life front. But also it's really bringing in kind of things even more so that are going on behind the scenes. Um, so this could be, um, you know, subconscious patterns, subconscious habits, um, something that, you know, you're, you're releasing a spiritual journey that you're going on or a spiritual endeavor that you're going on. Um, <clears throat> you know, things going on where like, this is a month that's just really, really honed in on like, your private life like what like who you are behind closed doors and so that trine with mercury retrograde it's like you're getting subconscious information that can really help you reorganize this home family private life front right so then we also have venus going direct on the fourth which is happening in your third house so you've been really reflecting on your values and your desires and your creativity and how you express yourself your self-expression in your day-to-day -day life you know the different people places and things you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis your friendships you know your relationships with your friends your values with the different you know communities that you're involved in or different uh, social experiences you're involved in um, so this has been a time of like really reconnecting with what's fun and how to express that what you're passionate about your creativity um, things like that and so with venus finally moving direct it's like you're finally getting clear on those things you're able to integrate those things and then move forward so then on the sixth we are going to have the mercury sun kazemi um, happening again in your fourth house of home family or 
Life Foundation, Personal Life, Private Life, Past Your Roots, etc. So this is going to be an important day on the 6th. This is where you want to really pay attention because something is getting revealed to you here. Like something, like you're, you're being shown something, right? You are realizing something, like something is being exposed to you or there's some kind of news or a conversation or a message or some kind of communication or light bulb moment that comes through that's trying to show you what this Mercury retrograde is really all about for you. So really pay attention right around the 6th um, because it's it's going to be very revealing. So then on the 8th, we're going to have the Sun in Virgo trining Jupiter. So again, bringing in your 12th and 4th house, these like really private areas of your life that are really connecting, um, you know, basically, you know, seeing things that you've been putting off and how you can apply them, how you can work through them, how you can go back and fix them and resolve them in order to move forward and in order to really rearrange your foundation, family and home life. So then on the 15th, we finally have the new moon in the sign of Virgo. This is a really beautiful full moon that's really connecting all of the earth signs um, and creating a kite to Neptune. So this is a really beautiful time of us really, um, you know, not us, I shouldn't say us, I'm not a Gemini rising, but of you, <laughs> of you really releasing um, and letting go and learning to trust in your long-term visions, dreams, and goals in the world um, and starting that new beginning for your foundation so you have something solid to stand on to be able to achieve those long-term dreams, goals, and visions, right? And so, but it's really creating this flow with your financial sector, your home life, um, and your 12th house of your subconscious, your patterns, your cycles, like, you know, things that you've been neglecting or avoiding, um, spirituality, healing, all of that. So it's like really creating this beautiful flow between all of these different things. And Mercury is going direct. So right around that new moon, Mercury is going direct. So then you begin to implement and apply all of the skills, the lessons, the things that you've been realizing and learning, um, to you know move forward like you begin to apply those and you begin to move forward from the 15th on so the 15th is a really amazing time of the month right in the middle of the month we're having this new beginning this new fresh start and you're able to finally move forward and start implementing a lot of the ideas a lot of the things you've learned so then on the 23rd libra season begins which is going to put more of a spotlight on your fifth house of love romance um, dating connections with others things that you're passionate about, your creativity, et cetera. And then on the 25th, Mercury is gonna come into its trine, final trine with Jupiter from your fourth to your 12th house again. So again, getting those bigger ideas can kind of feel like they're coming from a spiritual place or they're coming from your dreams or they're coming from your subconscious or you're releasing a lot to be able to finally move forward. It's like you're getting that last puzzle piece and everything's clicking and making really clear sense right around the 25th. But then on the 29th, we have one of the more intense aspects of September, and that is the full moon in Aries, which is happening in your 11th house, which isn't a bad place for it. But this is where you're really going to be revealed, like something's gonna be revealed to you, I should say. I cannot communicate in this video at all. Um, but something's gonna be revealed to you about your social situations, your network, your friend groups, your communities, your audience, your marketing, you know, whatever social situations that you're a part of, it's like something's being revealed to you there where maybe you need to face a conflict, maybe you need to do you, maybe you need to embrace your independence in some area, um, really put yourself out there and be a leader in some way, right? But it could be causing some uncertainty or some indecisiveness or you having to face a fear or let go of a challenge, karmic challenge, in terms of, you know, things that you're passionate about, um, your dating life, your romantic life, um, you know, something to do with your children, you know, something like that. Um, there could be like a challenge there that kind of arises, but I'm gonna do separate videos on the new and full moons this month, so don't worry um, where I go in deeper. So let me know down below if this related to you, Gemini. Um, also comment the word badass down below if you stayed all the way through with your rising sign. Um, so I know that you made it. And also, if you would like more from me, check the description below. I'm doing a lot more. I'm also posting a lot more on other platforms. So if you would like more from me, if you would like more in-depth stuff, you know, like to learn astrology, relate it to your self-development journey, all of that, join my Patreon. It's $5 a month. Um, I'm also doing one-on-one uh, -on -one reading so you can get your chart read. You can also just, you know, even if you've already had your chart read, if you're going through something right now or whatever, and you want more guidance on that, you can still get a reading with me. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you and I will see you guys in the next one. 
Alrighty, Cancer Risings, welcome to your September 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So for you, uh, if you are a Cancer Rising, September for you is a lot about cleaning up your shit, getting your shit together, getting organized in your day-to-day -day life with your, you know, kind of mundane routines, the things, the environments, the people, places, and things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this is a time where you could be really going back through and rearranging, reorganizing, getting very clear, maybe like doing paperwork or doing like tedious tasks on a day-to-day -day basis or working on some project or learning something new or relearning a new skill or, um, you know, connecting with different people, connecting with your community somehow, dealing with like events or planning or projects or scheduling, you know, a lot of those kinds of tasks are really, really big for you in the month of September where you're really going to be searching for, you know, small solutions, like little tweaks that create big results, right? And so, you know, this month is a lot about planning. It's a lot about replanning. It's a lot about, um, you know, making adjustments, being adaptable and going back and reviewing, you know, things, right? It's also about communications. It's also about, you know, your environment, things like that. So that's really what you're going to be very, very focused on in September. Um, you know, certain tasks that maybe you've been neglecting or putting off, certain appointments, you know, certain kind of mundane day-to-day -day things that you've been putting off that you need to catch up with and get organized with, right? So we start off September for you, Cancer, with Jupiter and Mercury coming into their trine from your third house to your 11th house. So this is really, really great for like, again, planning, planning a big event or planning something or scheduling something to do with a social situation um, and it being, you know, a success or, um, you know, making those small changes, those little tweaks and seeing big results from them, you know, um, really getting involved in your community or in networking or marketing or event planning or something like that could really, really be coming up around this time. Um, this could also just be like, you know, maybe you're going to an event with some friends or maybe you're going on a short trip and, you know, going to, you know, some place where there's going to be other people in some way, you know, it's like really combining your networking social life with your day-to-day -day environment environment or day-to-day -day things that you need to do, right? So anyway, so that's really happening the first few days of the month. You may be getting a lot of big ideals. You may be getting a lot of new opportunities um, or revisiting old opportunities. Also, Venus is going to go direct right on the 4th of September. Venus has been retrograding in Leo in your second house. So you've been really, really reflecting on your finances, your values, your priorities, your resources and uh, what feels authentic to you in these areas, you know, and where you've needed to get realigned to like what's important to you in your life, right? And so now that Venus is going direct on the fourth, you can finally start moving forward and implementing and integrating a lot of those lessons that you learned, right? So then on the sixth, we have the Sun, Mercury, Kazemi. Um, this is really bringing in some insight, like a light bulb moment or some news or some communication for you that's really showing you something here. So pay attention to the sixth because this is a really big deal for you. Um, you're really kind of seeing something clearly. It's like there's an aha moment or something happens outside of you that causes some kind of aha moment or some kind of news. And this, whatever this is, is kind of the premise of this Mercury retrograde that we're in. It's kind of showing you what this is about. So really pay attention. This could be a solution to a problem, a way to problem solve something, a way to fix something, you know, something like that. And then on the 8th, um, we're going to have the sun trining Jupiter. And so again, really bringing in that 11th and third house energy of like, you know, networking, social life, groups of people, etc., and your day to day uh, responsibilities, task, environment, um, creative projects, etc. So it's really kind of combining these two and really bringing in more of an optimistic viewpoint, big ideas. You know, you're seeing kind of a clear path forward. You're seeing kind of an opportunity here. So then uh, right around the 15th, we have the new moon um, and the new moon is definitely a really beautiful one. It's a new beginning, a new start, a new chapter and Mercury is going direct right around this new moon as well. So it's like finally we're moving forward. Like there's no more replanning, revisiting, reorganize, reorganizing, reflecting. It's like whatever plans, strategies, you know, you know, learning pursuits, um, events, you know, whatever that you've been going back and learning about, replanning, creative projects, tasks, etc. cetera. Um, you're finally moving forward with those lessons that you've learned in the weeks leading up to the 15th. And um, 
there's some kind of massive new beginning here where it's like your perspective has shifted, your opinions have shifted about something, you're finally feeling very clear about what you need to do moving forward in this area of life. Um, and yeah, it's just a really, really beautiful new moon. So then on the 23rd, Libra season begins and there will be a spotlight and focus shift going into your home, family, and private life sector. So then on the 25th, um, Jupiter and Mercury will come into their trine. And that is, again, going to be, it's their, it's their final trine. So that's going to, again, be in your third and 11th house, really kind of giving you those missing puzzle pieces that, you know, you needed. Those last few missing puzzle pieces where you see something very clearly now, you're focused very clearly, you feel very expansive and optimistic about where you're going. And then on the 29th, we have the more difficult uh, event of the month, which is the Aries full moon. This full moon is very intense. The Aries full moon usually is. But on top of that, the transits that we have going on right around this full moon that are coming into their, you know, exact aspect are also very intense. We're going to have Venus almost coming into her square with Uranus, Mars almost coming up on the south node. So this full moon's definitely bringing some energy with it. And uh, this is going to be, I think what it looks like for me is just a really what it looks like to me is like really breaking away from something, you know, a big, bold ending, you know, like it, it's kind of this just like big, bold moment of like doing something that's best for you and for your future and for your long term goals and for your career and your life direction. And that may mean um, getting out of some challenging situations where you've been trying to like keep the peace or find the middle ground or compromise with family. And so that's, those are some of the things you could notice at the end of the month, but I'm going to do a separate video on this, uh, later. So come back for that where I go more in depth, but, um, yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you. If you're a cancer rising, definitely let me know down below if this related and comment the word bad ass. If you watched all the way through, I appreciate you. I'm sorry. I couldn't edit this as much and do as much as this with this as I normally do. Um, I'm just really busy right now and I have to get this out. So, um, but yeah, let me know down below what you thought. If you would like more from me, see the description below. I'm doing a ton over on Patreon in September. So if you would like more astrology, more stuff, you know, Q and A's, et cetera, et cetera, go sign up for my Patreon. It's literally only $5 a month. So don't miss out on that. You can also get a personal reading with me. If you would like me to go over your chart or go over what the hell is going on with you in your life right now. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, my fellow Leo Risings, welcome to your September 2023 horoscope for the month ahead, baby. Let's get into it. So what is September all about for us? September is all about getting our shit together in terms of our finances, our priorities, right? Like, you know, really getting back to our values, getting back to the things that are important to us, getting back to the things that we hold dear, right? Getting back to the things that make us who we are, that support us and who we're becoming, you know, and that's why this is a lot about finances, resources, possessions, ownership, you know, things that we own. This is going to be a massive month for just getting our shit together here, cleaning shit out, getting very clear about how we want to move forward, what we want to do, what we want to achieve, our skill sets that we have to offer, um, our priorities, like what is of priority in our lives and how we want to move forward with all of that, right? What we can do with all of that. It's a time where we can really, really, truly find that small little tweaks, small little changes can create big results this month, right? When we can hone in on the small little details and really face these things and look at these things and rearrange some of these things and really focus on some of these things, we can really find that, you know, we, we get a lot of success from that, right? And so that is what September is really all about for us if we are a Leo rising. I know I've already been rearranging, cleaning, you know, like just really getting things back in order in our lives and, you know, like to really do the things, do the small little tasks that we've been neglecting, but that we know are going to bring us back into a sense of security um, and back into a sense of feeling focused on like what is actually important and help our minds and like the mental clutter in our minds, right? So anyways, let's go ahead and get into it, Leo. So um, on the fourth and like the few days leading up to it, we're going to have Mercury retrograde in its trine with Jupiter. And this is happening from our second to our 10th house. So this is a lot about really kind of reflecting on our bigger long term ideals and goals and uh, future career and 
all of that, our professional life, our um, brand, our identity and our brand, you know, all of that, like we're really reflecting on these bigger long-term things and the bigger picture and what we really want out of it and the steps, the strategy and the details that it's going to take to get there. So that is really huge those first few days of the month and it comes back in later in the month as well, which I'll talk about here soon. So also on the fourth, we're gonna have Venus finally moving direct. And so we've had Venus retrograding in our side and so it's like the end of July. So we've been really going back and reflecting on who we are, our values, the things that are important to us, our identity, our appearance, our bodies, like what we love, what we want, right? And learning how to really speak up for what we want, learning how to really assert ourselves and what we desire and what we want and seeing where we've been kind of out of alignment with who we really are in our lives, right? Like where we haven't been aligned with like our authenticity, where we haven't been aligned with like our identity. So this has been a time of really getting back to the self, like doing a lot of soul searching and, and reinvention of the self. And so um, with Venus finally moving direct, it's like we're finally, all those lessons are coming full circle and we're finally able to start moving forward and implementing them. Now that we have a clear idea on what's important to us, what we value, what we love, you know, who we are, etc. So then on the 6th of September, we're going to have the Mercury Kazemi. So the Mer Mercury and the Sun are going to get together. Mercury is retrograde still, by the way, at that time. So we're going to get a clear idea of what this Mercury retrograde is teaching us in the area of finances, resources, you know, the things that are important to us, priorities, etc. So we may get a light bulb moment or something may click right around the 6th. It's like we get this, this you know, this spotlight is shined on what we need to focus on. Like we get very clear about what the focus is or what the solution is or how we can, you know, what we're reflecting on and how we can fix something, right? So really pay attention around the sixth. It could be also the fifth too for some people. So fifth, sixth time frame. really pay attention to what you're, like what ideas are coming up at that time or what light bulb moments you're having or what news or conversations are coming around at that time because it's going to be really big. So on the 8th, we're going to have the sun then trining Jupiter from our 2nd to our 10th. Again, we're seeing kind of a clear path forward now in terms of our career, our long-term goals, the path that we want to take in life and in the world and what we want to do in the world. We're feeling very optimistic, idealistic, expansive. So this is a really big expansive energy where we're really seeing the bigger picture and how certain little things that we're doing are leading to that bigger picture, right? Like this month for Leo Risings is a lot about like, you know, the, the whole staircase analogy, right? Like we're not only seeing the whole staircase, but we're also seeing the small steps and details that we need to focus on um, to get there, right? So it's like, we have this big vision and that's great. And it may feel overwhelming or big, but this month it's not gonna feel overwhelming or big. It's actually going to show us the easy steps that we need to focus on right here, right now. The small details that we need to hone in on right here, right now to get to that bigger vision in our career and with our income, money, and finances and assets so and priorities. So that is really what the name of the game is this month for Leo Rising. So on the 15th, we're gonna have the new moon in Virgo. So this is where the new chapter really, really starts though for the month. It's like, you know, those fir that first two weeks are real, it's a really beautiful time of us reflecting and realizing and getting bits and pieces of information on like, you know, what we need to, um, you know, reorganize and redo in our lives and what needs to be fixed and how to go about it. But then we get this new moon with Mercury finally going direct. And this is that new chapter that's like, okay, now there's the new chapter. There's the new beginning. Now we can move forward. Now we can start implementing the bits and pieces and lessons that we've learned. And it's going to start making more and more sense as time goes on the rest of the month. So i um, really excited for that. There's some kind of new beginning coming in with our finances, resources, career, work, routines, et cetera, priorities. Like I'm, I'm really excited for that new moon in Virgo. So then on the 23rd, Libra season begins. The sun will move into Libra, our third house. So we'll definitely see more of a spotlight and focus on um, communication, creation, learning, um, you know, kind of maybe getting out and about more. Um, our community, our neighborhood, our environment uh, will really come into play around the 23rd. So then on the 25th, um, Mercury is going to try and Jupiter for the final time. And this is what I was saying before. We're going to have, again, that final missing puzzle piece coming in, that final, like getting very clear on the bigger vision coming in right around the 25th, feeling very optimistic, seeing exactly what we need to do to get to where we want to go. We may even start seeing results by that point or whatever. There could be an opportunity that comes in at that point or a clear path forward that prevents, presents itself. 
So that's right around the 25th. And then on the 29th, we have one of the more intense transits of the month, which is the full moon in Aries. This full moon is a very intense one because of some of the other aspects that we have going on around this time. Um, this is happening in our ninth house, which isn't that bad of a place to have this full moon, um, but it's definitely showing us the way forward. It is showing us where we need to embrace what's good for us, our own morals, our own belief, our own beliefs, our own outlooks on life, where we need to step into being more of the leader in our lives and stop being so indecisive and comparing everything and being so compromising all the time, right? Being so influenced by others and where we need to stand for what we believe, where we need to stand for what we want. Um, this could also bring in a topic of travel pursuits, educational pursuits, um, and potential endings or realizations or changes happening in those areas as well. So that is what is going on for us in the month of September, Leo Risings. Let me know down below if you feel like this is gonna relate, if it already is relating. Comment the word badass down below with your rising sign so I know that you watched all the way through. And if you would like to join me in more shit outside of just YouTube, um, I post a lot more on my Instagram, my Facebook. I also have my Patreon where I post exclusive content over there, astrological healing, self-development. I kind of intertwine all of it together. So you can get that for just $5 a month over on my Patreon. I also do personal one-on-one -on -one readings, um, which I do sales on a lot. So if you would like to get a reading with me and have my eyes on your chart to see what the hell is going on with you in your life right now, that can be booked down below. I also have an astrological course, if you didn't know, um, where you can learn relatable and easy astrology for good. Like I, I simplify it very fucking easy for you. You will understand astrology if you finish that course. So that is always linked down below as well. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you. And I will see you guys in the next one.